Hello and welcome to the Connecticut Student Film Festival. This presentation is designed to give you a brief overview of the information that was communicated at the Digital Media Summit on November 2nd at, Connecticut, at Western Connecticut State University. Now this is a very special year for the Connecticut Student Film Festival because it is our fifth anniversary. Um, the Connecticut Student Film Festival started in 2009 at the Connecticut Convention Center and was then part of the CT Student Innovation Expo. I think from memory it had about 10 high school participants um, and three categories, outstanding PSA, outstanding documentary short and then also outstanding fictional short. In 2010 we partnered with the Connecticut Film Festival and went to the Palace Theatre in Danbury and then in 2011 and 2012 we became our own event and made our home at the Palace Theatre Waterbury, which will also host the event this year on April 26th. Now, we have a selection of challenges for the Connecticut Student Film Festival um, that are open to um, students in a variety of programs and don't necessarily have to be affiliated with one of um, the core programs at the film festival. So, our most popular challenge, the 84 hour film challenge, is back. Um, this challenge, in my opinion, um, produces some of the best content that we see at the film festival each year. Um, it's probably by far the most competitive um, of the open challenges. Basically, um, students receive criteria on Friday morning at 7 a.m. and then they have until 7 p.m. to submit their finished products or finished films to our Facebook page. Now, um, there are two challenges this year. The fall challenge is December 7th to December 10th, and the spring challenge is March 22nd to March 25th. Now, just to uh, note, you are completely welcome to submit content for both those challenges, um, but all of the submissions received in those, both those challenges form one category at the film festival and will be judged together. We'd also like to note that for some of you that like to prepare for the 84 hour film challenge in advance and perhaps some of you even go as far as to develop some scripts, we, we don't necessarily accommodate that. We make no commitment about what the criteria will be and uh, we also always hold the right to change and modify that criteria um, in comparison to existing years. Um, so my, we encourage you to remain flexible and the majority of production is meant to take place over that 84 hours and that criteria will be set on that basis. Um, another challenge we introduced last year was the 90 second film challenge. Um, the 90 second film challenge, we're really trying to push this one this year. We think that uh, um, it's a really, it's a challenge that um, provides lots of different variations and differentiation. Um, there are three topics that the film must relate to, so that's important to know, three topics. It has to relate in some way to transformations, um, or science topic is energy, or the open topic is diversity. Um, so let me rephrase that, basically it has to relate to one of these three topics. Um, not all of them, but just one of those three topics, and that's listed on the challenge document. Now, the, bit, the other big thing to note about this 90-second film challenge is it isn't a silent film, but no, fi no sound can be recorded during production. Okay. Now, if there's some people in the audience that are saying, well, why is that? Well, it's for two reasons. Number one, we wanted you to, to focus primarily on the visual aspect of uh, communicating a story apart from um, the creative aspect that goes into generating a musical score. Um, and then the second thing is that there's lots of technical things um, with audio. And we wanted to kind of like um, give you guys in some ways a break of those technical things, particularly for those of you that are thinking of using mobile devices. Mobile devices can be very problematic in an echoey room um, and even um, when filming outside. So for those of you that are using a mobile device, hopefully we've eliminated that problem with sound by making it that you don't have to record sound during that production. And I do say that you, if you want, you can mute your devices or you can remove the sound from the production in post. Now, as I said, it's not a silent film. Anything during post-production goes. You can add a narration as the voiceover, you can add sound effects, and we'd also highly encourage you to put together a musical score if that's something that you have the skills to do. 
We also welcome a variety of styles for this 90 second film challenge. So it could be animation, stop motion, and even photography. There's nothing to stop you if you're into photography, taking a selection of images that perhaps relate to one of those three topics, and then working with someone who's interested in music and maybe creating a nice musical score to accompany um, the presentation of those sequence of images. It is 90 seconds. It doesn't have to be exactly 90 seconds, but it cannot exceed 90 seconds. For those of you in the 3D modeling and animation course, you have the option of um, submitting your uh, trailer for this 90 second film challenge. For those of you interested in animation or perhaps taking some of the animation challenges, um, this is another film that accommodates that. And for those of you out there that are perhaps working on PSA projects, um, look at this criteria. You're completely welcome to also submit your PSAs under the 90 second film challenge. The submission deadline for this challenge is April 2nd. Um, we always make the commitment that we won't um, bring that uh, submission date forward, um, or rather, we don't ever have any plans to do so. Um, but sometimes because of weather, um, and if we are able to, we will extend that submission deadline. But right now, it is April 2nd. We've introduced a new challenge this year, the Phonography Challenge. Now, let me just quickly define phonography for you. Basically, it's the creation of photos with a smartphone or similar mobile device. What does that mean, similar mobile device? Well, basically, with a smartphone, we're probably talking about an Android device or um, uh, an iOS device, an iPhone, if we're talking about a phone. But a similar mobile device incorporates things like iPads, um, the new iPad mini, um, and then also the iPod Touch. So, uh, or, or, you know, a similar mobile device, but not a camera, okay? It has to be um, phonography, so it has to be similar. Basically, look at the operating system, an Android or an iOS um, or a Kindle, uh, or even that's Android. So an Android or iOS device, or a Windows device, that works as well. Um, now, uh, the other big thing about the phonography challenge for you, all you teachers out there, um, based on some feedback that we got on Friday um, and a teacher at Pomporok High School, it was a great suggestion, um, we're actually going to open up the phonography challenge to teachers. Okay, so teachers can submit to this challenge as well. We're not quite sure what that looks like, um, but we do want to let you know that you can um, submit to this challenge as well if you are a teacher. Um, Again, you have to, the photo has to relate to one of three topics um, that are listed in the document. And the other important piece of the puzzle, unlike all the other challenges or the two other challenges, where you are welcome to submit more than one submission or participate in more than one project if you want, with the phonography challenge, we are only accepting one submission, one image per student. Okay, One image per student. Um, and actually, before I close on this challenge, it's probably important to go back and define phonography. So I said it's any photo that's taken with a smartphone or similar mobile device, but it's important that you, the image is also captured and edited. It must be edited on the mobile device as well, if you choose to edit, that is. So you can't go and take the photo with the mobile device and then go and do some editing in um, a computer software. No, you have to use an app. And I really would encourage you to go and explore some of the apps out there. This is a really growing art form. And there are lots of amazing apps out there that allow you to produce some really great things with, um, with images. So, you know, absolutely welcome and fantastic if you take just an image with the cell phone. But if you want to go and explore these apps and play around with color and other effects that can be added to an image, um, I encourage you to do that. I, I would definitely encourage you to, at a minimum, explore that. And as of now, the submission deadline for this challenge is March 8th. March 8th is the current submission deadline for this challenge. And that's primarily because we're expecting um, a lot of submissions. Now, uh, this year with it being special, we've introduced, we wanted to kind of like celebrate all of the films that have taken place um, over the last uh, previous film festivals. Every time we're programming the event, we're always like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could show this film or show that film? Well, this gives us an opportunity to do that, so, or potentially. So this year, um, we have two new awards, the five-year award for story and the five-year award for cinematography. So the story is pretty self-explanatory. We're looking at the story that's being communicated. Um, cinematography, um, feel free to go and explore that word on Wikipedia. We're actually going to go back to its roots. Um, and actually, we're looking, when we're talking about cinematography, 
of looking at not just camera shots but lighting and then also we want to look at editing as well so cinematography is kind of encompassing all of the technical aspects of uh, recording a motion picture now some details about these five-year awards well first of all um, a film to be uh, to be considered for one of these uh, two awards your film must have received an award at the 2009 2010, 2011, or 2012 Connecticut Student Film Festival. Okay, obviously there's no way you could have received an award for the 2013 Film, uh, film Festival. Um, as of now, it has to be an 84-hour film challenge submission, or it must have been an outstanding documentary short submission. Now, why I will say in regard to this is that we're just conscious about the fact that we have to get um, not only these films judged, but also the films... Um, that would be produced as part of the 2013 season. So um, we're conscious about the number of films that we can accommodate. It is possible that we will open it up to other categories. The next category on the list will probably be um, Outstanding News Report, um, which is uh, at the film festival two, for two years in a row. And then we might open it up to animation and PSAs. But that's unlikely um, just because that potentially could complicate the... Uh, the judging process a little bit. So as of now, um, it's just these two categories, possibly that third category, um, so just stay tuned to Facebook for that. Um, some more information about these awards. Um, when we're talking about submitting it, we're talking about endorsement, and it has to be endorsed by a student who is credited in the film. So we can't have a ninth grader at a high school who um, basically credits a film or, or rather endorse a film that was produced two years ago at his school and he's not listed in the end credits. It has to be a student who is credited in the film. So if you are have obviously left the school or you've got a film or you're a teacher and you think it will be really good for one of the films that were produced a couple of years ago to be endorsed, then what you have to do is go and send this out to the alumni and try and get them to come and endorse their films. And obviously we welcome them back at the film festival. Um, the other thing is that submissions are only eligible for one award. So what do we mean by that? Well, it doesn't matter um, if we receive multiple awards for uh, multiple um, uh, endorsements for one film. That film will only be eligible for one award. So how do we do this? Well, basically, um, it's only going to receive one endorsement per student and a film can only be submitted once. It can only be endorsed once. So the first time a film is endorsed, you will have to, the person who endorses it will have to reference if it's going to be put up for the award for story or the award for cinematography. And if we receive any other endorsements for that same film, we're going to ignore it. We're going to go with the first one. And if it's for story, we go for story. If we then receive another endorsement for um, cinematography, we're going to ignore it because the first one was an endorsement for story. And they're the ones we're going to go with. So they might need some communication um, between the filmmakers um, on the film to determine if it's going to get poured for, put forward for story or, um, or cinematography. Um, and only one endorsement per student. So if you're student A and you've worked on maybe three or four award-winning film submissions, um, ultimately, if you're the only one who's in a situation to endorse a film, you're going to have to choose which film you endorse. And as I say, you have to be credited in the film. Your name has to come up in those credits at the end of the film. So five-year award for story, five-year award for cinematography, and I would like to emphasize at the bottom we have further details still to be finalized. Ultimately, we don't know what this looks like. We don't know how many submissions we are going to receive. We've got a lot of question marks still on the table about how we're going to get these films judged. Um, and there's no way we're going to be in a situation until probably about a month before the event to know how much room we have on the programming schedule um, for the event to determine how many of these films that we will show, if any. Um, obviously, the priority for films will go to the 2013 submissions. Um, we will obviously provide space for an award to be given, but we will not guarantee any of these films will um, actually be shown at the event, though we hope to show at least three of them at the event. Um, and then in another important point with details to be finalized, we have not determined how these films will be judged yet. 
Um, and to be honest with you, we reserve the rights to judge them um, at the moment in any way we see fit. In other words, in any way we feel like we can get them judged. Um, but as of now, um, those details are still to be finalized. And we do hope that we can put together some kind of panel to judge these films. Um, how do you submit these films? That's probably a question in everybody's minds right now. So first of all, you have to go to our Facebook page. You could have to like our Facebook page. And what you have to do is you have to basically post a link to our Facebook page with the film, where the film can be viewed. So that can be via YouTube, it can be via ctstudentfilms.org, um, or it can be perhaps to the server uh, uh, on your school. I would like to note that um, uh, I would like to note that the uh, film, the, the YouTube has, or rather the film festival has its own page on YouTube. It's YouTube forward slash CTSFF. On our page, I do believe we've got all of the award-winning film submissions since 2009. So you should be able to find all those submissions on our YouTube page um, if you don't have access to them now. And then once you've posted your link, it has to receive a certain number of likes in order for us to be for it to be considered for uh, that award. And those likes are 50. Now we may we may reduce that number because we're going to open up the endorsement over a short period of time. Uh, if you don't, if we're noticing that um, some schools perhaps are having problems getting that 50 number, in other words, it's too many. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've got like 15, 20 likes, the majority of films have got 15, 20 likes, um, and we need to kind of like get some more endorsements, then we may reduce that number a little bit. Um, we don't have any plans to expand that number as of now. Um, I would like to emphasize something off the bat. The number of likes a film gets has no relation to how it's judged. Absolutely none. I can tell you that. So um, if a film gets 51 likes and a film gets 250 likes, they're going to both go into the film, uh, the, the uh, judging process equally. Um, and judges, you know, what's in our mind, judges, the structure that's in our mind, judges won't have um, any knowledge of how many likes they got on Facebook. So, um, you know, it's great. We encourage you to get as many likes as you want. Obviously, we want you to get as many likes as you want. But I don't want to give the, self, um, the full sense um, that uh, perhaps you've got because you've got 250 likes and everyone else has only got 51 likes that your film has um, now a better chance of receiving an award. So that's all the information we have right now for the five-year award for story and five-year award for cinematography. Details will be coming soon. As I said, it's likely that there will be an endorsement period open. Um, it could be over the holidays, perhaps sometime around December to the end of January. Um, we'll be receiving endorsements for those films. But um, keep posting on Facebook. And then also keep posted on Twitter. We've got a hashtag, CTSFF. 2013. We will be trying to send emails out um, as these uh, details become more finalized, but keep posting on our Facebook page, keep posting on Twitter, and we would like you to use this hashtag as well. You know, we, we thought this was a huge success last year at uh, last year's event. Um, it was We th felt the, the hashtag was being used perfectly. Great conversations about the films, great feedback about the event itself, um, but we want that to take place throughout the year. And um, if you st choose to participate, for example, in the 84 Hour Film Challenge, hey, use this tweet to kind of like share what's happening um, during that production weekend. Um, we'd love to kind of like keep posted with the development of your projects over the year. Another addition to uh, the Connecticut Student Film Festival is potentially an iTunes U course. Um, we expect this to be up and running sometime over the next week or two weeks. Um, and uh, this presentation is probably even going to be included in the course. Um, iTunes U is a free app um, that you can download and for the devices that can get this app, what you would do is you would go to the link wherever it's posted, so we're probably going to post the link on our Facebook page and also we'll send out emails with the link in. And with the mobile device, what you have to do is you would click on the link with the mobile device and what it would do as long as you have the iTunes U app on your device it will give you the option of opening up the course in iTunes U and once you open up the course in iTunes U you'll be able to store it there 
um, in iTunes U. And then after that, it will be synced to the iTunes U um, app. And every time we update the course, um, the course will automatically be um, updated in the iTunes U app as well. So we think this is great as we try and really push for that phonography challenge, um, the 90 second film challenge, and also the 84 hour film challenge, where you'll have constant updates um, to the material needed for um, uh, producing content for the Connecticut Student Film Festival. So um, that's it. If you have any questions about the Connecticut Student Film Festival number five, feel free to email me. My email address is here, Wurwood, W-O-R-W-O-O-D, at education connection, all word, or one word, dot org. My name is Matthew Wurwood. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing content over the year in production, and we look forward to showcasing it at the end of the year. Thank you so much.